What's up, everybody? It's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter. Welcome to episode one of Chicago Street Stories. We take a look back at events that happened in Chicago. Some shit that didn't happen was very street. Some shit that happened that just shocked everybody. Uh, we're going to take a look back at a lot of things that happened in Chicago. On episode one, we're going to take a look at the E2 nightclub. This was a club in Chicago that all the young people went to to dance and shit and kick in. You know, it was different back in the days. Right now, it's hard to go to a club. You fuck around and get blah, 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 going in that bitch inside that motherfucker, leaving out that motherfucker. So it's dangerous. But back in the day, people used to go to the clubs and kick it and have fun and not worry about people shooting the clubs up, even though it was club shootings. But people still had a good time. Uh, it was a club called E2. 21 people actually died inside of that club. Uh, people started a fight inside of that club. And next thing you know, shit happened very crazy inside of this club. We're going to take a look back at that event. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like button. It helped with the algorithms. You know, you from Chicago. It's hard to know where you're going to go if you don't know where you've been. You know, it's hard to know about your future if you don't know about the past. So y'all take a look at this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to try to do these all the time. But my goal is 500 likes. Soon as video hit 500 likes, I'm going to be dropping the next video. Uh, the next video in Chicago, Street Stories, is going to be about a project in Chicago called Robert Taylor's. A lot of shit happened inside of that project. A lot of street shit, a lot of killings, a lot of violence. Police used to go inside that bitch and like, how they hit down? Because motherfuckers was on the roof shooting down. Blah, 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 blah. All kind of shit. Snipers. Some of your favorite rappers had went there. They actually made movies about this place. So um, that's going to be actually episode two. I'm going to drop it soon as this video hit 500 likes. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out our latest episode of Chicago Street Stories. Blah, 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 blah. The E2 nightclub occurred on February 17th of 2003. The nightclub was the epitome restaurant. It was above it on the 23rd 47 South Michigan Avenue Street. That's in the South Loop neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. 21 people died. More than 50 people were injured when panic ensued from the use of pepper spray by a security guard to break up a fight. The club owners were convicted of criminal contempt for their persistent failure to keep up this club. They were sentenced to only two years probation after 21 people died. The stampede was triggered by club security using pepper spray to break up a fight. Several people inside of the club experienced vomiting, fainting, nauseous, fumes, and all kind of shit. A lot of people didn't know it was a fight. Most people in the club thought they was hit with poison gas. They thought this was a terrorist attack. People started running towards the exit. The exit was a steep stairwell leading to the main entrance to the ground floor. The narrow doors which opened inward, a fire code violation. Additionally, when the doors were normally kept open during business hour, they had been closed after the fight participants were kicked out the club. People didn't know that people were kicked out the club due to a fight. They thought it was a terrorist attack. Although at least one emergency exit was opened by a security guard, the rest of them were chained shut. People were climbing the stairs. People were knocked down and pinned by the crowd. As security attempted to pull them to safety, the heap of bodies reached six feet in height. Fight broke out and they called the guards to come break it up. They couldn't break it up, so they started spraying mace. People throwing up everywhere. Throwing up everywhere. You cannot get out, can't breathe. Panicked people fled down the stairs, colliding with others who were just arriving and going up them. Some people fell, and in a matter of moments, a pile began to form. More than 1,500 people fled at the same time because they thought it was a threat. While trying to free trap people, E2 guard Ira Navarro heard other clubbers atop of the stairs laughing at what's going on, laughing at people dying. 21 people were killed, 12 women and 9 men between the ages of 19 and 43 died from uh, being choked, they call it compressional officiation. And more than that, 50 people were injured. It was a number of controversies around this case. Dwayne Cowles and Kevin Hollins, they were actually the owners of this club. They were uh, faulted for having overcrowded and faulty exit lights. 
Police was called to that club over 80 times before that stampede. The club has been ordered to shut down actually a year before the stampede. The attorneys fought and all kind of shit and got the club open. During the 2007 trial, the prosecutors claimed that club security staff was not properly trained. They should not have sprayed no fucking pepper spray inside of a club that had thousands of people in it. Uh, these guys were eventually hit with charges. They were acquitted on involuntary manslaughter charges, but were found guilty on criminal contempt for violating court orders to close the second floor of that club. E2 was permanently closed after that incident. On November 16, 2011, the ruling was overturned when a judge ruled that the court ordered to close the second floor was illegal. And, and it was nothing, you, you was helpless because you were alive, but you seeing people dropping dead because they've been crushing it, ain't nothing you could do about it. <laughs> On April 14, 2013, the Illinois Supreme Court unanimously overturned the 2011 ruling and upheld the 2009 conviction for criminal contempt, calling the court order clear, certain, and concise. Um, this was very crazy. This was a time back in the days when people wasn't really afraid to go outside and go kick it. Yeah, it was still killing. It was still violence, but it was only to a shit that people knew what was happening or it was random. It wasn't every day people was getting in the car sliding for their enemies going to kill them. Blah, 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 blah. It wasn't like that. It was just isolated. If you had beef with a nigga, then you knew who it was. Nowadays, you can lose your life and nobody knows who was behind that shit. Uh, but this is crazy. If you're from Chicago, you got to know your history. A lot of people don't understand. It's more things going on in Chicago than just the drill culture. And the drill culture was birthed from a lot of things that happened in Chi-Town before it was Chirac. This one of those events, the E2 nightclub.